Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Cape Rugby TV. Nice to have you along and of course it is Wednesday night, your favourite time of the week when you get to find out all about what's happening in the world of club rugby in specifically Western Province. Although now with the Community Cup we can stretch a little bit further because so many teams from around the country are competing in the Community Cup. Community Cup is of course what was previously the, uh, uh, the former um, South African Club Rugby Championships. But the very best of the best are taking part in the Community Cup. Of course the Varsity Cup has also been uh, in action in full force as well as the Varsity Shield. That's been a great tournament. We'll be catching up on that uh, during the course of the show as well as finding out a little bit more about what's happening in the Super 15. Stormers will be uh, getting going soon but we did have the start of the Super 15 just uh, this uh, past weekend. So uh, we've got full flight rugby in, in action. A little bit later in the show we were joined by Paolo Manuel from UWC to tell us more about uh, their match against the uh, mighty Impy, uh, UKZN, who played against uh, UWC at uh, UWC on Monday night. It didn't go their way, but uh, we'll get Paul Emanuel, the lock from UWC, to tell us a little bit more about that. Before we continue then, let me uh, introduce you to my esteemed panel this evening. Hello, Morgan Newman. How's it, Japs? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. You? Yeah, I'm good. It's been a, so we started we started our first preseason game this past weekend. So, yeah, it's good to get the first one out of the belt and looking forward to the rest. And Paul Delport, Springbok sevens player. I believe your dog's not well. He's not, Jeff. Uh, he had a he had a cancerous tumor removed from his paw today. From his paw. Pick him from his paw. His his, his back paw. Oh. He's a golden retriever, so he's very athletic. He likes to run around. So a little bit like worried you. about him. No, much much more athletic than me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, you know, animals, well, I hope everything goes well with it. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Is he going to be okay? You he know? should be okay. The vet, the vet called earlier said uh, they excised the whole mass, so, so hopefully they got all the cancer and, and he'll be okay. But he's a, he's a big baby, so have Is to look he? after him tonight. Yeah. Big baby Labrador. <laughs> yes, that's, that's yeah. it. Well, there you go, folks. Uh, just to show that those of us at, um, at, the, at uh, Cape Rugby TV, we actually do have uh, a slightly softer side where we look after our animals something that you should do as well well of course it was a dispatch who came down here they traveled all the way down from uh, the eastern cape to come and play against hamilton's over the weekend uh morgan newman was playing on the day morgs uh, this was your first one dispatch was really out of i think what four or five games under the belt they've got audrey Geldenay's former springbok audrey Geldenay is coaching them donny gerber's old side yeah what did, you, what did you make of them yeah they're a good side i mean they really came down and they they sort of you know showed us the physicality that uh, that, that we'll, be, we'll be expecting in the in the community cup so yeah it was a tough first one i think you know to play against the the champions from last year in your first uh, contact session for the year is obviously going to be a tough one but i think we'll be happy with what we achieved on the on the day and uh, yeah we got uh, two more two or three more warm games before the we kick off the the, the season on the 15th of march and you guys didn't just play one team, there were two teams and you mixed both sides up. Anton Wilman, your coach, clearly had a bit of uh, testing the players, trying to see who's gelling and so on. Yeah, Muli's thought, I think Muli's um, uh, sort of, he thought that, you know, it's best that the guys don't do 80 minutes of contact from the first, from the, from the, from the first go. So what they did was we did two teams of 15 and we played, each, each team played a, played a half. So I think he, it looked like he evenly spread the two teams or the 30 players across the two teams. And yeah, I mean, the f- I happened to play in the second game and I mean, look, Saturday was an unbelievably hot day, as everyone will know, so 38 yeah. degrees. So we played, actually ended up playing two chuckers of 20 minutes, which was good for the body. So yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a good start and looking forward to the rest of the season. Yeah. Anyway, like I said, Audrey Halden, his former Springbok, was coaching the side there at uh, Dispatch. A dispatch came down and came to play in the glorious. I actually think they came down a week too late. I think they were coming up to Cape Town 10s and then realized there was no tent, so we might as well just play some rugby. Anyway, let's check out some of the highlights in uh, the uh, warm-up Community Cup match. Um, Hamilton's against Dispatch at home ground for Hammies.
So a bit of action there, of course, dispatch taking on Hamilton's and uh, looks like the guys had a bit of fun there. And uh, yeah, that's exactly what we're, Morgs, I suppose that's what you were looking for. You were looking for, for that kind of trial run. Yeah, look, I mean, it's that time of the year, you know, where we need a bit of a, a bit of a run, about, a run out there. So yeah, it was good to get to get the 40 minutes under the belt. But you know, some of us, some of the guys happened to play in the Cape Town 10, so they got the, the run as well. And then obviously, you know, the forwards who, who didn't play in the Cape Town 10 ended up playing in the, in the match on the weekend. So yeah, good, good run about. And, yeah, like I said, we've still got another two or three more games of the of preseason before we before we go into things a bit a little bit more seriously. So, yeah, the fitness and the conditioning is still part of, a, a sort of an integral part of our preseason at the moment, and we we go away on the weekend to uh, uh, to the Stellenbosch uh, Performance Centre for another training camp, and then we come back and we play the Western Province uh, Vodacom Cup side. So, still a lot a lot of rugby to be played before the before the first game of the season starts. Still quite a lot of action. Um, Audrey Heldenais, uh, former Springbok legend, um, he was uh, down at Hamilton's as he was uh, leading the uh, dispatch side, coaching the dispatch. Uh, we managed to catch up with him straight off the game and get some of his thoughts. Right, folks, I'm here with the coach of dispatch. Uh, of course, a uh, warm-up game, of course, getting ready for the Community Cup. Audrey Geldenhuis, uh, no stranger to the world of rugby. Audrey, a uh, good result for you. You're sure happy with this type of uh, warm-up game? Yeah, no, well, um, uh, you were know, uh, here Hamilton's to come win op your life and good uh you see what you all that do so uh once happy uh par clean quick is that it's almost working good uh for the community cup of the achter mart begin but uh once happy. You let van dag twee spanner it gebrang, uh eerste span, tweede span, exponential a big mix, but um the help book big um na yele deep to the kick. Yeah, it's belangrijk, you bet uh the community cup is a really uh strafe competition good and uh you bet on smart sort let uh on genoeg deep to in elke position. And the great challenges uh, in the Community Cup, as you look at the other spanners, the ones are now really gewoond aan the die Community Cup. Uh, what do you see? Ja, man, ons is ons is natuurlijk die winners van verleden af en je weet, zoals uh, je ook maar weet, uh, die hoogste bomen vangen altijd die meeste van. Allemaal wil je 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 begin kat naar naar size toe en uh, ja, wel ons uh, ons gaan uh, gereed maken om uh, die challenges uh, te krijgen en te aanvaren, te speel tot die beste van ons vermoeien. En, uh, je weet, ons mukpunt is maar weer om uh, uh, elke game te vatten zoals ik kom en uh, je weet op een andere dag maar weer te kijken of ons in de beker kan winnen. En wat jij gedacht van Emmy's performance vandaag? Ja, wel, je weet. Uh, Hulle is uh, klomp fysische spelers so goed, uh, klomp goeie geconditioneerde spelers so goed, jy weet, hulle het lekker diepte en hulle posities so goed en uh, ja, wel, hulle voorspoed vir hulle en jy weet, uh, jy weet alles wat moois vir hulle. Hulle is hier wel gedaan en uh, ek hoop julle geniet in die kaap. Nee, maar baie dankie, <laughs> baie, baie dankie hoor, alles wat moois vir julle. Adrie Geldenhuis is the coach there of um, uh, Dispatch and uh, yeah, I suppose for everybody right now, the Community Cup is a pretty serious competition. Dispatch uh, have been out of the out of the mix for a very long time, and now they've come back and they are one of the dominating forces now. Um, but Morgs, I mean, Dispatch might be one of the teams, and uh, that is tough. But the other teams, they're are going to be tough nuts to crack. Yeah, there's lots of teams in this competition that um, you know that have put up, that have shown in the past that have won the sort of the previous club champs. And then also Hamilton's. I mean, Hamilton's have won club champs before. Rovers have won club champs before. You know, Dispatch last year were known to be sort of the surprise, the surprise package of the of the of yeah. the Community Cup. So, I think it's a it's a it's an open it's an open it's a sort of open open season for for the Community Cup. So we're looking forward to seeing who puts up their hand in the first performances. And Paulie, got any uh, thoughts on the on the Community Cup? Yeah, Jeff. Uh, I think something great, something to look forward to. Um, again, it was fantastic to see the Hamis guys play on Saturday. Also to see to, to see dispatch, you know, for us in Cape Town, we we absolutely love our club rugby, and it's nice to see a couple of the quality teams from 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 outside of the Western Cape. You know what I found amazing was after the game, I was walking through the guys and I was looking for Audrey Calderon to say to him, "Listen, by the way, tell your guys up in dispatch that if they want to see, uh, you know, I was going to tell him that they that they can tune in tonight and dispatch guys uh, can can." And as I was walking through these dispatch guys from PE. They all started saying, Ali, are we going to be on Cape Rugby TV? <laughs> so, quite incredibly. <laughs> yeah, I must say, I took quite a bit of chirps from, uh, from while the game was on, in fact. I took quite a bit of chirps about Cape Rugby TV in the, in the game, so the Oaks are definitely watching. From the dispatch players? Yeah, look, a few of them happened to, to watch a program, and yeah, they, they climbed into me, but yeah, it's uh, all, all good fun, I guess. But don't you think that that's just incredible that we've actually managed to play club rugby through the country now? 
Yeah, that, that's I think that's the, the big thing with, the, you know, that we now sort of with the Community Cup and with the Varsity Cups and all the different tournaments that are out there, I think it's important now that we can we can showcase other clubs and people can relate to it. You know, in the past it used to yeah. be a case where we can only showcase a, a, a sort of a local club. Now you can showcase any club in the country and then they'll, and then they'll, they'll be able to watch it done at home in their, in their living room. Yeah, as long as it's still something that our Cape Town guys can uh, relate to. Paul, you don't want to be watching something and, in, in, you know, about what's happening in... I don't know, potch a storm or something, <laughs> you don't know the team. No, definitely, and that's what was so special, is that Dispatch came down to Cape Town, playing one of, the, one of our top teams. Um, also, people, people seeing how Hamilton's are, are, are kind of getting ready for the season, uh, which, is, which, is, which is very exciting for all of us. Yeah, talking about Hamilton's, Anton Wurman is the coach there. Uh, we managed to catch up with Mullis after the game. Well, folks, I'm uh, with the coach of uh, Hamilton's now, Anton Woolman, of course, no stranger to Cape Rugby TV, uh, getting ready for the Community Cup. Melis, uh, warm-up game, you needed to get this time in. Absolutely. Um, you know, we thought that, um, you know, why not start with the best? The dispatch won it last year. Yeah. And uh, they approached us in uh, November last year, uh, um, surrounding a tour coming down to Cape Town. And um, we went to it with a, you know, obviously results are, are always important, but today... Uh, um, was part of our journey it was it was the uh, the first contact in a 15s environment that um, um, our guys have taken and I played two two teams of um, uh, of 15 guys for each 40 minutes against them and um, um, for our first game I think they into their fifth game uh, um, I was really really happy yeah yeah um, going forward I mean dispatch uh, as I do was saying now uh, one of the tougher teams um, are you happy with uh, your sort of your if you want to look at it from a yardstick point of view, how do you feel at the moment? No, absolutely. I mean, I've got um, a whole bunch of new guys who've joined us this year. Mm. We tried new combinations, uh, um, new lineouts, uh, um, new systems. Uh, it was the first time guys had tried to implement. Mm. Uh, um, defensively, I, I thought we were good. The tempo was good. Uh, I thought the guys adjusted nicely. Um, and as I say, for, the, for their first 40 minutes together, uh, for each of those two teams that played in the, in the main game, uh, I'm really, really happy where we are now. And, and um, with the balance of our friendlies that we have coming, I'm sure that by the time we hit the, um, the round robin stage of the Community Cup, we're going to be, um, be, fi be firing on a totally com on a completely different level to the way we play today. Yeah, Kevin Music and uh, played. Uh, it was happy with his performance. I kiss against Marty's. They came with a victory. They said they started training in November already. Um, how's your preseason been? Well, we we kept our guys together from um, the 12th of October until the 10th of uh, December on a, a um, in gym uh, program where yeah. we got together twice a week. But um, we started um, again early Jan, and um, Maurice Cornelison has been handling um, all our pre-seasoning uh, pre-season con conditioning, and it's gone bloody well. You know, we, today we got through a game. You don't um, come up against a pack much tougher than dispatching club rugby. Yeah. The guys really bring it to you, and I thought they brought it to us, and we we really stood up well and walked away with no injuries. Everybody is, is, is intact. So we, we can look forward to um, a good hard week of training again next week and not have to worry about <laughs> trying to find more depth. <laughs> Nothing better than a coach uh, coming out with a, with a squad of uninjured players. Shock, it's going, to be, um, it's going to be great watching you guys. You're the only uh, club rugby uh, side in Western Province that's uh, flying the flag for Western Province in the Community Cup. So we wish you guys all the best and we'll be following every step of the way. Oh, great. We, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to be representing Western Province as the, um, the only open club and, and we hope that the, the rest of the, the club supporters out there can put their colours aside just for that, for that week and, and support Hamilton's as we try and uh, go and, and lift that national trophy. So yes, uh, Mullis there obviously got his game plan on, his game face on so to speak. A lot of planning to do before they get going. Um, yeah, and it's not going to be easy. Uh, it's not, not going to be easy but by a long shot. The guys obviously have to do some testing and kind of work out what their players are going to do. Uh, we managed to catch up with Yechia Gilumia, the captain on the day. Mullis, you didn't take the, cap, the captain's cap? No, I look, mean, um, I mean no, look, we played in two teams and Yechia has uh, been a leader from last year. So he leads us from the front. So yeah, the number two or the forwards are generally the ones that lead from the front. So yeah, I was happy for him to take a lead. <laughs> the big guys <laughs> leading from the front, yes. So we caught up there with Yechia Gilumia, one of the leaders at Hammy's uh, Super Bowl today. Right, folks, uh, Dispatch just played against Hamilton's, of course, in a warm-up match, a friendly uh, year in the, uh, at Hamilton's in the Community Cup. And with me is the, one of the captains, because, as you heard, uh, the, the coach, Anton Wilmer, so a few rotations today. Yechia uh, Gilumir, but, of course, no stranger to Cape Rugby TV. He's, 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 he's led from the front at Hammy's uh, for, for a couple of years now. Yechia, the Irons is tough, no? No, it was a hard game. Um, it was good conditioned. He had a few games in the sack. He had a good tour, but I think he had a 
hulle man gestaan, daar is een paar foute en goed wat ons gemaakt het, wat ons nie moes nie, maar hulle is, hulle is goed conditioneerd, hulle lyk, lyk lus vir die community cup. Vertel ons bykie van die foute, want dan, dan weet jy tenminste waarop jy, jy, jy gaan werk, en ek steek dat daar was een paar sterk punte ook. Ja, weet jy, ons het uh, nieuwe spelers en nieuwe combinaties wat probeer word, ons is een squad van omtrent so derig op die oomlik, so um, van die manne is die eerste keer wat hulle saam speel, en van die ouwens die eerste keer wat daar ragets gespeel word vir die, vir die hele seizoen, so um, paar goals gewees, achter paar goals gewees, voor wat die, wat die lekker uitgewerkt het, ek denk as ons baie goeikies kan uitskakel, gaan die ding baie gladder loop, gaan ons beter, baie beter doen. Het jylle nogal baie geprekt is, is die, is die spelers ba- nogal ba- uh, taal met mekaar gehad? Ja, um, ons het uh, verlede jaar, november het ons lekker dreer gedrukt tot so die 12e december, en ons het uh, vroeg januari begin, so die, die fixheid is daar en die conditioning is daar. Um, saam gespeel, het ons so net so voor die tens het ons bykie by mekaar gekom en begin structuur speel, en dit was ook een lekker, lekker stepping stone vir ons gewees. Maar um, ek denk voorint ons het nog so'n geim op wat, wat vir ons wacht, so ons het uh, paar goeikies uitgehaal in die geim het wat, wat ons aan gaan werk en uh, wat ons sal recht hee vir die community cup. Ja, jylle het voorheen jy, die competitie al gewend, ja, so ek seker jylle, jylle ken, ken jy, die, jylle weet hoe om te win. Ja, die, uh, die druk is natuurlijk in die competitie bykie anders as, ja. as op so'n geim soos die. Um, ek denk ons moet om af wat geim vir geim, ja. en uh, dan kyk ons wat daar gebeur, ons wil hier een ding vooruit daar loop hee. Ja, maar wel gedaan en... Uh, Ons gaan jylle alipad volg, jylle en soos elke enigste WP club in die, in die community cup, so ons sal jylle alipad top hou. Baie dankie. Jy gee gulie meer, hopefully uh, going to be leading from the front there, of course Hamilton's is uh, our um, only Western Province uh, club that's uh, in uh, the uh, the community cup. Morgan's community cup, um, it's, it is though the best of the best, um, it's, it's, I know I've, I've said this already, it's not going to be easy, but um, how do you feel about the fact that Hamilton is only the only team representing Western Province in the Community Cup? I reckon we've got some, it's, a, it's, quite, a, it's quite a sort of burden to carry if you want to call it that. I mean, you know, it's a, there's a lot of good teams. It's the best of, like you say, it's the best of all the different provinces. So it's quite a, it's, it's quite a, uh, it's a privilege on the one end, but at the same time, it's got big, we've got some serious expectations that we need to live up to. So we're training really hard. The guys I mean, are putting in the hard of, work. Sorry to interrupt you, but have you kind of gotten onto the fact that this, this is now an elite competition it is the best of the best out of every province oh look i think it's if you win this one i do think it is it is the case of you're the best open club in the country which is quite a prestigious um, title to hold but then again you know there's there are a lot of there are lots of teams out there who want to win this competition so yeah. we've started in november we're putting in the hard yards and and we've, we're still busy at the, we're still currently doing it at the moment so it's really become a, a, f- a full season now yeah, so it is the best of the best, and we managed to catch up with the tournament organizer of the Community Cup, Dwayne Heath. Now, he's been involved with uh, club rugby for quite a while, trying to uh, structure this tournament and find the best way to put the competition together, and we finally managed to catch up with Dwayne, Dwayne uh, Heath from Saru, and uh, he tells us a little bit more about the co- tournament, the, the format, and, of course, how uh, they've uh, managed to structure this, uh, this tournament around the rest of the country. Catch up now with uh, Dwayne Heath from Saru and find out more about the uh, Community Cup. Folks, I'm with Dwayne Heath. He is the tournament manager of the Community Cup. The Community Cup has not quite started yet, but of course we're at Hammies today where uh, the first warm-up match was played uh, for Hammies against Dispatch. Um, Dwayne, before we talk about today's match, uh, are you guys ready? We're ready, JP. We, we're ready. We've got 52 games to organize, but uh, all the flights are booked, the hotels are booked, and the teams, as you, we saw today, are gearing up. Tell us a little bit more about the Community Cup for those that have absolutely never come across it. Let's, let's, let's assume I've, I've never yeah. played rugby before I'm a, and I'm 12 years old and I want to know more about the Community Cup. JP, the Community Cup is the old National Club Championships that's been rebranded. It's, it's the elite club competition in South Africa, so it's, it's the best of the best. It's the provincial champions yeah. and a handful of other teams. Uh, we play Rugby World Cup format, four pools of five, 20 teams. Uh, top two go through to Easter in George like we used to do in the old days. Yes. And it's just uh, it's a wonderful uh, way to revive club rugby because it, it did suffer in the professional era. And I think we, we're seeing light at the end of the tunnel now, and this is the start of it. So it really is an elite competition. It's the best of the best out of every province. Yes, unashamedly so. It, it, is, it, yeah. is, the, it yeah. is the National Open Club Championships. Yeah. Um, but uh, we've branded it um, nicely. Um, Celsi have come on board with, with a great sponsorship. And it's just taken it up a level. To, you know, if, if anybody who follows club rugby and, and, and has watched the club championships in the last few years knows that there wasn't really much 
you know, going on and the standard was pretty poor. <laughs> yeah, but, we had to uh, work on that a little bit. Yeah, Not a lot of prize money there. Yeah, and then even today, I mean, we saw yeah. dispatch in, in Hamilton's play and it was an unbearably hot day and it was pre-season yeah. and I think both sides operating at about 60%. But even so, you can see there's a real quality players out there and I think come March, April, at the business side of the competition, these teams are going to be going at it. Talking about the teams, is there any teams that you, you, you think have risen to the top over the last few years and have taken the Community Cup sort of bull by the horn, so to speak? Well, I think the, the fairy tale story was dispatched last year, winning winning the, a national title again 25 years after Donny Haber led them to their last one over Tickets yeah. when Lars Boote was still playing. So so I think dispatch was a fairy tale story. Uh, we saw here today that I don't think they're going to give up their title uh, with without a fight. Um, I think Hamilton's will be in there. We've got, you know, Hamilton's the oldest club in the country, so yeah, the, the tournament yeah. can only benefit from their presence. And then I think we've got those those tough Northern Union sides, Brockpun and, and Rustenburg, who yeah, are sort of yeah. lying in wait as well yeah. for, for, for the guys down here. And then, of course, down in Borland Way, I mean, Vestbank and Roses United, yeah. um, I think they're going to bring some real flavour to the tournament again. And I think, yeah. especially Hamilton's having to travel to Vestbank in a couple of weeks' time, that's going to be one hell of a day in yeah, it, it certainly does look like the standard is getting higher and higher every year. And the, the guys have got a, a reason to start training earlier in the year. They've got a, a reason to put in more effort. Everything is lifting up step by step yeah. on, on all club rugby levels, not only at Community Cup. But we, we're seeing even in, 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 the, in, the, in the clubs that are maybe not playing in the, in the big tournaments, they've all up to the gear maybe with the added exposure and more information and better coaching and it's, it's it's getting better in club rugby all the time. Well that's right I mean there's two points I want to make there I mean around the country now we're seeing uh, pre-season uh, tournaments regional yeah. cross-border we've got the community challenge now between yeah. Western Province and Borland um, as we speak now the Eastern Cape Super 12 is on the go we've got six matches on the go in the Eastern yeah. Cape um, and then up north we've got the Asopol which is reviving itself and kicking off on the 1st of March as well and if I just look at the uh, the, the, the player registration uh, forms that, that have been coming into my office yeah. sort of 500 of them in the last week wow. um, you know we've asked the players to just say what their dreams are what they would like to see out of club rugby and you know, without fail you know you're getting guys saying we want club rugby more professional yeah. we want to take it up yeah. a level and these, yeah. are, these are not 30 year old guys yeah. saying these are the these young are, players they're coming out 20 year old guys saying yeah. we want club rugby to be the next feeder into provincial rugby and, mm. and, and really you know it's encouraging when, when the younger generation are seeing club rugby as a viable mm. pathway now well, Dwayne, I'm going to leave it at that. I know you're going to have your hands full, so best of luck. I'm going to congr congratulations on, I suppose, a nice little warm-up game here. But, yeah, good luck for the tournament. Thank you very much, JP. There we go, folks. Community Cup about to get started, of course. We're going to be following Hammy's progress all the way through. Looking forward to it. And we'll catch you after the break. Yes, there you have it. Uh, Wayne Heath talking about the Community Cup. Obviously, lots of planning involved there, and uh, great to see now who the best clubs are in South Africa. So there you go, the Community Cup, and uh, that's going to be launching, of course, in about three weeks' time. Uh, when we come back, we'll be joined by Paolo Manuel. He is, of course, no stranger to Cape Rugby TV. He hasn't been on the show yet, but we've been trying to get him on the show for a long time. Paolo plays lock at UWC, leads from the front all the time and he'll tell us a little bit more about the match UWC against the KZN um, MP uh, that was played at UWC on Monday night. We'll be coming back with Paolo Manuel after the break. Welcome back, folks. Yes, it is Cape Rugby TV. Remember, you can find us on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. Paolo Manuel joins us now. Hello, Paolo. How are you? Hello, thanks. Hello, Tips. Nice to have you here. Yeah. Uh, you look a little day. bit tired after Monday night's game. Ah, it was hectic. It was hectic on the body. A nice physical game. No. All right, well, listen, before, and I can see you, you're like kind of thinking your thoughts through there about it all. So we're going to catch up with you on that game in a, in a second or two. Bully, it looks like he's still settling into the old TV moment and all that. Yeah, give him some time. Give, give him some time. Give him some time. All right. You know, build, we're building celebrities here. We're building celebrities. Let's quickly take a look some at the, uh, of the results now in the Varsity Shield. This is, of course, the third round result. So a couple of games have come and gone. Uh, UWC, of course, losing to uh, KZN on Monday night, 33-24, and TUT going down to CUT, 39 points to 18. So there's been a couple of upsets already. Let's catch up with some of our photo images uh, from the match uh, between um, UWC and the KZN MP. <laughs>
couple of great picks there in the match between uh, UWC and uh, KZN MP. Uh, Paolo, uh, tough game. Um, and I know you guys were probably hoping for a, for a win there. Obviously, no doubt, but uh, just didn't go your way. Yeah, I think they maybe wanted it more. Uh, and I think things didn't go away. But too many unforced errors, and I think we got a lot of hard work to do before our next game. And what is the story with that uh, um, uh, concussion rule? I didn't know that there was no concussion rule. The, the referee says the concussion rule is uh, the player must go off for the concussion check. And he comes off the, off the field, and then the administration table says, no, there's no such thing as concussion rules in the Varsity Cup, will he? What do you make of that? No, Jobs. As, as as far as we know, there is. I mean, it's it's pretty standard in, uh, huh? in 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 rugby now. You get your you get your few minutes, and you you, you go off, and they they do the test. No, 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 no. No, let me fill you in. Let me fill you in as a as a as a rugby a varsity shield rugby expert. Oh. Uh, oh, by the way, the two referee thing. We got to talk about that as well. <laughs> um, no, no. What happened was the referee said uh, concussion. Uh, off you go, and of course another player can come on during the concussion test, and then you're going to go. And when the player came off, the administration table said, nope, sorry, no concussion rule. Once you're off the field, you're off. So uh, UWC already had to make a kind of a, like a forced change right in the beginning of the game. So Pilot, was that a, a big impact for you guys? I think it was mentally, because um, we weren't expecting to lose a player so soon in the game. But I actually found out about it yesterday as well, that the there's no concussion rule in the Varsity Cup, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is quite surprising to me because that, that's, a safe, that's a serious safety issue for the, the rugby as a game. Well, I think, I mean, if, if, if a player's got concussion, then, you know, quite frankly, you shouldn't come back on, period, yeah. unless there is a concussion test. I mean, if this was uh, the boxing ring and you were concussed, there was no coming back. So, okay, it wasn't the boxing ring. You guys had a good, clean game, though. The other thing that we were uh, asking about, uh, um, were, we were talking about the two referees. You know, in the beginning of the poll, you remember, in the beginning of the season, we were talking about two referees, the Varsity Cup and how it works out. And I still said that at the Varsity Shield, I didn't really see how it worked. And I wasn't really sure if the referee was on the one side or the other side. And then only on Monday night did I realize, you guys don't have two refs in the Varsity Shield. It's only in the Varsity Cup. Yeah. Um, how are you, how's it making uh, the, the, the different rules? How's it been a, as an impact for you? The different rules with... You know, the, if you look at the kick, you know, you guys, you've got guys like Freddie Miller who's yeah. got the best chip and, chip and chase probably in the country. Um, the props are wearing different jerseys. You know, there's the 20-minute break and all that. I know, which obviously you're used to, but the, 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 like the kicking game, for example, I know you're locked, so it probably doesn't affect <laughs> you much. Um, it does affect us to the point where we... If we kick it and they're anywhere on the field, they can mark it. But what the original the original rule was, they can mark it and then um, they'd get a free kick from anywhere on the field. But now what the referee does is they give advantage. Yes, so yeah. if there's no advantage, then they can come back for the free kick. But I think yes, they want to they want to improve on the the, the the running rugby aspect, but it sort of slows the game down more. I think yeah. uh, if you mark it and things, it, it slows the game down. Whereas if they kicked it out, kicked it in a normal game, the game would continue as, as it used to. Yeah, I think what they're trying to do is possibly get you to not kick. That's it, you know. Yeah. But there again, I saw Freddie Miller. Now he doesn't bother kicking and catching. He just chips it in a space where there's nobody. I mean, probably that takes serious skill. Oh, it does. Uh, Freddie, we, we chat about him quite often. He's a, yeah. he's a fantastic player. He's got so much, so much vision, so much X, X factor. Um, yeah, it's good for, good for UWC to have him around. Okay, so Paulo, uh, where to for you for you guys from here? Well, we've got a week off. We off on Monday and we play in CUT on Thursday, um, next week Thursday. So yeah. we've got a lot of hard work and uh, thinking to do. Looking at, looking at ourselves, looking at where we made our mistakes, and what we can do better. And we sort of need to find that uh, UWC spirit deep inside and bring it out. And you got it. Yeah, you've got it. Can't wait. Now, the other thing is um, there's also quite a couple of uh, new young guys in the team. Um, have they started settling? I think so. I think it's, it's good for you, WC, to we've, got, we've now got some good depth within the club. And uh, it's nice, nice to bring the, the youth through and ex expose them to the senior rugby with. Do you think it's like a bit of pressure on them now that they feel they have to really uh, to stand up and vase? Definitely. Like... Uh, there's always pressure against uh, when you bring a, a young staff into the, into the senior rugby. So yeah. I think there's always a bit of that <laughs> pressure. But I think in the team environment, uh, you get used to it and you sort of shield it a bit. 
because uh, we I always predicted. So that's fine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, everybody was a youngster at some stage. So probably you got to go through the motions. So. Yeah, it was a hell of a long time ago when I was a youngster. Yeah. So, yeah. so you, have to, you have to go through it. Uh, but it's, it's interesting, Josh, what uh, what Paolo says. You know, the guys doing a bit of introspection. You look at uh, UCT and Marty's UCT after their first game. Uh, I think got got a got a bit of a hiding that didn't expect. Marty's also their first two didn't really expect to lose, and the guys went back, did some introspection, did some planning, um, and came, came out with. with well, both teams came out with a win on uh, Monday night. So yeah, I, think, I think UWC can definitely turn their season around. Yeah, this is exactly what Kevin Musican said when we asked him last week, uh, how did you turn around? And he said straight up, soul searching. Yeah. He didn't talk about more skills or defense. He just said soul searching. The boys went back. Anyway, uh, let's look at some of the results uh, from the uh, Varsity Cup. In the Varsity Cup, then, the second round results uh, played on Monday. UJ 32-15 against Vitz. Tux 26-0 against Shimlos. Good result for Tux there. Pukka going down to Marty's 33-22. And then Ikees beating NMMU 26 points to 13. So good, two good results for two of the Western Province Club rugby sides. Marty's, I think there were a few people last week who started saying, Marty's doesn't look like the team of old. They're really going to struggle. and They're probably not going to be able to do it. And yet they go out and then they beat, uh, who did they play? They beat Pukka. Pukka, who are the, the number one team in, in the Varsity Cup. Yeah, no, Jeff, so I think old Kevin, Kevin Musicant called it last week. He said the guys were maybe going to take a bit of, what, a, a couple of weeks to come together and uh, yeah. find their feet. He definitely called it. He said they were going to go up to Potch and, and win, and it yeah. could happen. And they did it, and they did it. Yeah, so well done to the guys there. Let's take a look now at some of the photographs from the Varsity Cup. Lots of action shots there from uh, the match, uh, Marty's against Pucker. Let's catch up now with the action shots uh, where we watch UCT up against NMMU.
Lots of action there, uh, UW, uh, UCT at least, uh, showing and carrying the flag for uh, Western Province as well as Marty. So, yeah, guys, good luck there as we support our three uh, Western Province clubs that are playing in the uh, Varsity Cup and the Varsity Shield. Of course, Marty's, UCT and UWC. Let's take a quick look at the logs in the Varsity Shield. CUT are on top with 14 points, TUT on 10, UKZN on 7, UWC on 6 and Forte uh, down at the bottom on 5. While in the Varsity Cup, Tux are in uh, the first place with 11 points. Pucker dropped down now um, to 10 points. NMMU on 9, UCT 9, UJ are uh, in 5th place. Marty's in 6, Schimler's in 7th place. And Vitz are down the bottom in 8th position. So, uh, yeah, uh, Marty's are going to have to get a long way to climb up there. They're now 2 or 3 games behind. They're going to have to do a little bit of catch up. Let's take a look at the next fixtures coming up now um, in the next couple of days. Fort Head uh, are up against um, CUT. That is in Bloemfontein at 7 o'clock on Monday. And TUT take on KZN in Durban also at 7 o'clock. While in the Varsity Cup, we see Tux against UCT. And then FNB UJ take on Schimmler's and Bloemfontein. Vitz take on Marty's. Uh, Marty's got home ground advantage there. And NMMU take on uh, Pucker in Port Elizabeth. Ikes go, are up against Tux, as I said. Kickoff early there. That kickoff is at a 10 to 5. So make sure you're glued to the television set. Uh, when we come back, we'll take a look at what's happening in the world of a Super 15. Of course, the Storm has played against the Boilers over the weekend. And this coming Saturday, they kick off their Super 15 campaign against the Lions. We'll be back with you after the break. Club rugby it is, and that's what we want to be focusing on. So a lot of action still happening in Western Province. A lot of the clubs, even though we're going to talk about the professional stuff in a second, a lot of the clubs are out there and they're busy getting ready for their pre-season training. So some interesting friendlies that have taken place. And I must say, West Bank, they played also against UWC over the weekend. 36 points to 5 was the win for uh, West Bank. And uh, Coronations going down to Scottsdale 29-27. Uh, Macassar 2017 over Horston. And uh, Hammies, of course, in their warm-up game, which we checked out earlier on, 26 points to 14. Remember, folks, you can, of course, join that referees course. It is free at the moment. So if you want to go and attend the referees course on the 21st of February, free of charge. It's a heart here is Belleville. It's goodie bag, lucky draw. And uh, all you need to do is SMS the word rugby to 33280. 33280. 33280. That is the number you want to SMS to... Um, uh, get your name in the mix there to go to the referees course. Remember, it is free, and as we explained earlier on, you can then end up refereeing for your club or your school and make yourself a little bit of pocket money doing uh, what you love to do. Of course, your favorite sport there. Super 15 it is. Let's take a look at the results. But uh, in the Vodacom the Super 15, the Cheetahs beating the Lions 21, uh, or at least losing to the Lions 21-20. They were leading for quite a while there. And then the Sharks 31-16 over the Bulls. Paulie, let's uh, quickly uh, ask you... Um, uh, you had the cheetahs for a win, didn't you? Are you going to rub it in? I'm definitely going to rub it in. Are you leading? Are you leading at the moment, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to, to be honest, it's, it was uh, absolutely fantastic to see the Lions coming back um, after, after being out of top flight Super Rugby for a while. And to have gotten the win, I, I, I really didn't expect it against that cheetahs team. And then, and then we called it, I think, the Sharks. I know it's very early in the season. So the season's 15 weeks long, but the Sharks are going to make a massive push to win the Super Rugby. Yeah, I think that I think the Sharks are going to be one of the big threats this year. And you know, with, with Jake White there, I don't know. I think it, it just spells trouble on every level. But having said that, the win margin wasn't that big because the TMO did turn the uh, afterwards. And we, we found out that uh, Dion from Blumenstein, the ref, or at least the TMO, had made a mistake, and that one of the tries was not actually supposed to be allowed. Yeah, that was. I, I think that was all the. Um, oh, I've not forgotten his name. The scrum off try. Uh, mm -hmm. Reinach, Reinach's try, uh, just quite quite early on. Uh, I think the Bulls, I think the Sharks had knocked it on in the lineouts and they'd missed it because they didn't go, I don't think they went enough frames back um, and they, they, they didn't pick that up. They just picked up the Bulls knock on, uh, which was then played advantage and he intercepted the ball and scored. Yeah, so then my, um, my Super Bowl prediction would have not been that big a way um, because. Uh, yeah, anyway, you know, the referees today, seriously, <laughs> you know, how they spoil my super brew predictions, you know. I don't know, Paolo, what did you, did you manage to catch any of the games over the weekend? I caught a bit of the um, Lions and, and Cheetahs game. What uh, do you think? Quite impressed with the, the Lions. They, uh, yeah. 
yeah. surprised me a bit. And then I uh, got a bit of a shock to him as well. Good running rugby, good physicality. Quite enjoyed it. Yeah, I think a lot of people uh, didn't think maybe about the fact uh, what it feels like to be pushed down and out and be treated like an outsider for a bit and, when it went and, and how much mentally... Uh, and of course, the amount of extra pre-season training time that you've got then, but when they, when they push the Lions out of the Super 15, um, or, you know, you, you're going to definitely put the team in a place that they're going to come back angry. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so, it. What did you think of uh, Victor Matfield coming back? No, I don't discuss Victor Matfield coming back on the show. It's one of those topics we don't, we don't discuss Victor Matfield on the show coming back at all uh, or playing for the Bulls at all and ever. So please, Paolo, if you're going to come to the Cape Rugby TV show, some things we don't talk about. I would rather talk about Paolo Manuel playing for the Bulls or the Stormers. Would you prefer that? Yeah, we could talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's always such a bad minute. No, look, I mean, he obviously made an impact. I think he's, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's one of those, it's one of those situations when you get a, even if John Smith had to come back into a team now, it's that amount of experience. Um, you know, when Bob Skinstat went to the, to the World Cup in 2007, he maybe wasn't on top form, but the other teams, they didn't know that. They just knew, here comes experience, here comes the golden boy, and here comes trouble. It definitely throws you off your game plan. If not, adds value to the team. I don't know, Paulie, what do you think? Yeah, well, definitely. I think, to, I think to have someone like, like Victor in the team immediately, immediately gets, the, gets the opposition to prick their ears up. I think the guys are, are worried. Like I said, I don't think there's a better line-out exponent in the game, he's still, dominated. You think still, years. Again, still do it? I think he, I, th I think he still has been. You, you, you look at Victor; he's been, he's been very intelligent. He's stayed involved in rugby. He's, he's been helping the Bulls now when he's yeah, been. Can he do? For the can, last he, year. can he do eighty minutes? I, I don't know if he can do eighty minutes, but he oh. can definitely. I think he, 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 he showed us skeptics over the weekend who, 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 uh, who thought he maybe he maybe wasn't going to make an impact. When he came on, I think the first thing he did was steal a lineup ball. Yeah. I think that's the first thing he did. Yeah, no, he, that, that, yeah. <laughs> look, but there again, he's not exactly the heaviest lock in the world either. <laughs> no, he's not. Know? I mean, scrum off and throw him up. I definitely skipped a People few think that sessions. he's heavy, but he's not, he doesn't weigh off as much as Parler weighs. <laughs> Parler, you must have at least 20 kilos on him. Maybe 30. Maybe 30. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, yeah. Folks, we're going to take an ad break, and when we come back, we'll take a look at some of the fixtures in the Super 15. Then we'll, of course, give you an opportunity to win for yourself the Evox Advanced Nutrition Hamper. Evox Advanced Nutrition, of course, the official sports nutrition supply to Western Province Rugby and the DHL. So, there you go. Oops, that was on the screen now. That would have been the answer for you. Um, uh, but uh, when we come back after the break, we'll take a look at some of the Super 15 fixtures, and uh, we'll also uh, give you a chance to win that Evox Hamper. Back in a sec. Welcome back, everybody. Yes, uh, remember, by the way, you can find us on Twitter, at Cape Rugby TV. Uh, you're going to find Paul Delport on uh, Paul Delport 9. That's right. Am I right? Paul Delport 9? Paul Delport 9. Right. Paolo, you're on Twitter? Yeah, the Paolo Manual. The Paolo Manual. There you go. That sounds like a horse. <laughs> well. Like a, yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. It's a family show, folks. Okay, so if you want to win for yourself uh, the Evox Advanced Nutrition Hamper, the before, during, and after, and I'll pull it out first here. This is the after, which we like to say is the most important, right? That's the Evox Rapid Recovery. This is what you have to have after every gym session, after every uh, practice session. It makes sure you get to the next practice. Right, the next product that you want to have is during the practice. So we're kind of working in reverse here. During practice, that's the Super Carbo, the Q Super Carbo. If you're a cyclist, if you go to gym, if you go swimming, Super Carbo is your, your kind of your sipping drink, if you want to call it that, during your training sessions. And then, excuse me, I'm just going to lean down here for before training. Okay, so when you need that little bit of extra energy, Cyto Crank it is. Okay, so this is how you would use it. You would use the Cyto Crank before your training. Then you would use your super carbo during your training, and then make sure that tomorrow you can train again at 100%, because you can never train at 80%. You can't train if you haven't been fully recovered. It doesn't help you. It doesn't help the team, um, and it certainly doesn't help your muscles. They must recover first before you train them again. Rapid recovery straight away. So Evox Advanced Nutrition is uh, the official sports nutrition supply to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. And if you want to win this hamper now, you can see it on your screen there. SMS the answer. Just tell us who is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. SMS the answer to 33280. And congratulations. There you see it on your screen right now. Congratulations to Candice Delport who walks away with the uh, hamper. So well done, Candice. One of the guys will be in touch with you soon. You walk over the before, during, and after Evox hamper. Let's take a look now at the results in the uh, Super 15 as they played out over the weekend. Well, the Crusaders, uh, at least these are fixtures, sorry, folks. Uh, the Crusaders are uh, up against the Chiefs in Christchurch. Cheetahs take on the Bulls in Bloemfontein. The Brumbies take on the Reds in Canberra. The Sharks are up against the Hurricanes in Durban. And the Lions take on the Stormers. Stormers go away game 
uh, in uh, Joburg and then the Waratahs are up against the force in uh, Sydney. And let's take a look at our um, Superbrew predictions. Uh, so the panel did roll out there. This is our top 10 now in the, the uh, Superbrew pool. Juan Pia walks away uh, with the yellow cap in the first round for the Cape Rugby TV Superbrew pool. Juan Pia in first place. And I think we've got about four or 500 members there. Um, so Jean Pierre, New Spice, uh, then there's some other guy there, uh, JP Nordier, Soir, Neil J, Wally Pittman, Wendell Sculler, and Kenny Sparks. So yeah, uh, probably is it a matter of just plain and simple experience um, and rugby knowledge to know uh, to do well in Superbrew? Yeah, James, I don't know. It's uh, very iffy. It's think, very iffy. Uh, so you mean I just I got lucky? I think that is no, no. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take anything away from you. Uh, but we'll see. All right we'll, then. We'll see who dons oh, okay. the yellow cap next week. Okay. We'll see. So everybody's just go like this. Go like this. All right then. Okay. So let's do some of our Superbrew predictions. But by the way, folks, if you are out there, join our Superbrew pool. It's great fun, and we're looking to to bring on some great prizes during the season. Last year we gave away signed uh, Stormers rugby jersey, and uh, we're looking to give away more prizes uh, during the course of, uh, of of the season. So Superbrew, it is. Jump in there. Um, Paolo, I trust that you're going to jump in with a couple of Super Brew predictions here with us. We'll start off Crusaders up against the Chiefs. They're playing in Christchurch. Paolo. Crusaders up by seven. Crusaders by seven, Paulie. I'm going to say Chiefs by ten. Chiefs by ten. I'm going to go with the Chiefs by three. Cool. And then at, uh, on, on Friday at seven o'clock, the Cheetahs take on the Bulls in Bloemfontein. Uh, Paulie? Definitely the Cheetahs, but it's going to be tight. Cheetahs by four. Cheetahs by four. Yeah, I'm going to go Cheetahs by two. I think you're right on that one. Cheetahs are going to be upset after that loss against the Sharks, and they, they are a good outfit. I just don't think the Bulls are up to it. The Brumbies take on um, the, the Reds in Canberra. Paolo? Oh, that's a tough one. I think uh, Reds by five, eh? Reds by five? Yeah. I don't know. I want to see if Quaid's playing first. Uh, you see, this is, of course, the problem that we as, as rugby presenters, we've got to give our predictions so early in the week. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be positive. Quaid's going to play, so the Reds by 10. Reds by 10. I'm going to go with the Reds um, by 5, but for a different reason. I think that the Brumbies are not going to be as stable after Jake White's left. Yeah, I don't think uh, it is. You know, um, Quaid or no Quaid, if he comes in, we win. But the, I think the Jake White factor, the coaching scenario, is, is going to throw the... The Brumbies a little bit off. Then, of course, it's the Sharks against the Hurricanes in Durban. That kickoff there at five. Paolo? I'd have to say Canes by six. Canes by six? Yeah. Now I'll say the shark, Sharks by 12. Sharks by 12, yeah. I'm going to go the Sharks by seven. Um, I think the Hurricanes are going to come back well sorted this year, but uh, I, I do think, I don't think they're going to be able to beat the Sharks at home. Um, and then, of course, it's the Lions against the Stormers in Joburg. Uh, Paolo? Stormers by 12. Stormers by 12? So I say Stormers by one. It's Stormers by very, one. Very tough there. Stormers by one. Okay, that's quite a that's quite a, a good one. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Stormers by five. Um, it's gonna be their first game. So Lions have had one game already. Otherwise, I would have gone for a much higher prediction for the Stormers. DHL Stormers taking on the Lions at seven o'clock on Saturday. That's your last Saturday game. But then the great news is that there's more rugby on Sunday. The Waratahs are up against the Force in uh, Sydney. Paulo. That's an, uh, that's going to be a tough one, but uh, definitely Taz. Uh, Taz, huh? Taz by five. Taz by five. Taz, I want to say the Taz by 30. <laughs> the force, the force, I don't know. I don't know what the force are going to go. They, 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 they do have some new recruits. I'm excited to see oh, myself yeah. rocky play. These, hopefully, these. He's, hopefully he's playing. Um, but the, the Waratahs always play such good rugby. And if they do we gets, actually care if he's playing or not? Uh, didn't he run away from, the, from Western Province? No, he's a southern suburbs boy, good man. So you um, still wish him all the best. Yeah. Don't know him that well. Chris Heiberg, is he not playing at the force? He is. Chris is also there. Um, and a couple of couple of youngsters uh, from here. Ke Fenton Wells? Kevin Foote's now no. coaching. Kevin Foote's the uh, attacking coach at the force, so yeah. it'll be interesting to see what Dylan Lates is also there as well. Okay, so quite a lot of, uh, yeah. quite a lot of uh, Western Bronze players playing yeah. at the force. Okay, so then it's Waratahs. It's the Waratahs <laughs> by seven over the force. Um, playing in a Sydney kickoff at 7 o'clock on Sunday morning. Hopefully you haven't had such a heavy Saturday night that you'll be able to enjoy it. Paula, thanks for joining us. We look forward to having you again on the show. That's been a pleasure. Paulie, we'll see you uh, getting ready for the Helderberg Sevens. Yeah, Jeffs, we'll have, to, we'll have to have a look and see if we can put our team together. Yeah, we're still going to put our team together. So, yeah, the Cape Rugby TV side will be playing in the Helderberg Sevens, the Extreme Sevens, of course, uh, in Helderberg. 
um, on the 28th of February and the 1st of March. So that's next weekend. So get down there. There's going to be lots of action. I think there's about 50 odd teams playing, and there's 100,000 Rand prize money, winner takes all. That's Helderberg Extreme Sevens. We've been building up to it. There's teams from all around the country. Make sure you get down there and check out the Helderberg Extreme Sevens. That's a wrap from Cape Rugby TV. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place. Bye bye.